My dorky daddies, I have to confess something. I hate plugins, which feels like kind of an insane thing to say as an editor, but it's true. And while they are somewhat of a necessary evil to do some pretty basic things in Final Cut, they are, in my opinion, almost completely unnecessary for DaVinci Resolve. Up to this point, the main plugin I use day in and out is Magic Animate V3, which is a plugin that helps you do simple motion graphics without having to go into fusion. I love it. However, However, the other day, my good buddy Spencer, yeah, the guy who used to do motion graphics for Matt Diavella, he told me he had some new motion graphic transitions for DaVinci that he had created and he thought I would love them. I just want to get your like reaction. genuine reaction. Between you and me, I didn't think I would like them or have a need for them because of the magic anime. And boy, was I wrong. Yeah, for ooh. Dude, I love these. I love these a lot. So today we are going to dive into what these are, how to use them, and where you can get them because you are definitely going to want to snag these. Question number one, what are these things? We've kind of already covered it. They are motion graphics transitions. They're DaVinci Resolve transitions. So just like you would do maybe a wipe or a, you know, a glitch or whatever default transition is in DaVinci Resolve, Spencer has made these new transitions that do these motion graphic elements. Now, the way that he designed them and why I love them so much is that they work best on PNG or motion graphic elements. They can obviously work on footage, but they weren't designed for that. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Question number two, how do these things work? Well, of course, the best way to answer that question is to just show you guys. We've got DaVinci Resolve opened up. Let's dive right into a quick dorky dad example and just show how powerful and simple these transitions really are. For starters, we are going to use my generic gritty grid background, which is the background I use for just about everything. Let's lower the opacity quite a bit. That looks nice. We're also going to want to use a dorky dad. Let's use our most standard Jake dorky dad that, you know, we definitely overuse. And then just for kicks and gigs, let's throw in a text element. We're going to use the trash hand. Nope, not that one, not share tech. I am dorky. Let's also make sure that we have a drop shadow on that and let's make it a little bit bigger. So now that we have all of our elements, first thing that we are going to do is drag one of the in transitions to the start of both the dorky dad and the text element. So I'm gonna use in push overshoot and in pop on the text, probably stagger the text a little bit, and let's see how this looks. Yeah, looks great. So as you can see, what we're doing here, we've got a motion blurred movement transition on both elements. The in push does a nice push with a little bit of an overshoot, so it has nice eased keyframes to move me a little further than the landing destination. And then the in pop does a very nice just pop on the screen. I do like in pop overshoot. Let's try that one. Bam, bam. I mean, come on. That just looks so clean. Boom, boom. We're like halfway there on a dorky dad animation. And then to finish the animation, we can just do an out push. I like to do a push on both of them with the exact same timing so that both elements fly off the screen at the same time. I think this looks really good. And really the last little piece of spice that we're missing is a camera shake. So let's make sure to put a camera shake on both of these. I'm always dialing down the speed, always increasing the rotation amplitude. And I just think that that looks really nice. And just like that, with a few awesome transitions, we have a pretty standard dorky dad motion graphic. Again, there's more that you can do with Magic Animate, but I do this type of simple motion graphic all the time. You guys saw it in the intro. I have been using the crap out of these transitions. They are awesome. They're so good. One quick tip, and I tell this to everyone, I'm always saying this whenever I get the chance. You can see here on my timeline, there's a blue bar over top of everything that I'm doing. If you are having trouble with the playback on this, and sometimes you do, there's some motion blur on this effect, but I would just say for anything in DaVinci Resolve in general, if you are having trouble with playback, you want to go to render cache and make sure that it is turned to smart. All this does is it uses intelligent, you know, DaVinci Resolve looking ahead to see if it can play something. And if it can't play it back in real time, it background renders it and makes sure that your playback is always smooth. 
And again, like say we were to shorten this, you'll see the bar turns red to re-render. And then once it's blue again, you're going to get that good playback. Resolve in general has magnificent playback, like overall the experience is so good, but sometimes you need this. And again, with a lot of these heavy motion graphic type stuff, it's just a good idea to turn it on and it works really damn well. And of course, by now you guys are naturally asking the third and final question, where the heck, Jake, do we get these plugins? Guys, go to the creativeherd.ca, that's Spencer's website. He has a bunch of other stuff that he's made as well. Um, these are the ones that have passed the Jake test. Um, I love our friendship. He just sends me stuff he makes and most of it I'm like, yeah, you know, cool, not for me. And this one was the first one where I was just like, dude, I'm going to use this so much. So go check those out. Um, if you want a discount, I think hopefully we'll have it all set up where you can use Dorky Daddy. I think that was the code we wanted to use. Yeah, Dorky Daddy uh, to get a discount on this stuff, which again, they're already super cheap to begin with um, and absolutely worth every penny. But there you go. You're welcome. You guys get a little bit of a discount. Go support Spencer. He put in a lot of great work on these. And if you're using DaVinci Resolve, you cannot go wrong. They make so many simple MoGraph tasks that much easier. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. want to give a quick shout out to our members and thank them. They support the Dorky Dad family and are just the best and get weekly videos on Mondays where I just sit down, do more stuff like this, talk about editing, talk about, you know, things that I think are important to become a great and powerful editor within the internet space. Um, but yeah, thank you to our members. But with that, I'm going to let you guys go because I have got to get back to editing. Later, guys.